Welcome to Marks and my talk about uh, secure execution and attestation and confidential dump. Um, so first I will start with uh, secure execution, a short revi revisit to secure execution. Then I will talk a little bit about attestation and Mark will continue with confidential dumping. So just for secure execution, um, uh, so normally or without uh, the hypervisor's full control over our unsecure guest. It um, can access the guest, it can uh, modify the guest state and memory. And, um, sorry, my notes are missing. <laughs> ah. uh, so, and that also includes any secrets in that guest. And you probably don't want the, your hypervisor to access those secrets and modify them. So, um, or probably you don't allow it to do that. So we have the trusted entity, we call it Ultravisor, it's part of the firmware. And this Ultravisor manages the confiden confidential state of that VM and the hypervisor has to cooperate with the uh, Ultravisor to run the secure execution guest. And the guest also can share pages with the hypervisor. Uh, and no one but the guest owner and the Ultravisor can access unencrypted confidential state. How does it work? Um, the guest owner prepares a secure execution image. And this image includes a public elliptic curve DV Hellman key. And this key is used then for establishing a shared secret between the ultravisor and the guest owner. Um, from the ultravisor perspective, it takes the public key of the guest owner, its own private key, and derives a shared secret. And this means that only the ultravisor can decrypt and run the execution image. Um, the guest owner can also store additional secrets in the secure execution header of the secure execution boot image. For example, a customer communication key that's later used for dumping. And also keys for the com uh, component decryption. Uh, such com com components are the kernel, the kernel command line and the init RD. These are always encrypted authenticated and integrity protected. And again, we can store secrets in those um, components. For example, we can store a lux key passphrase in the init RD, in clear text. Um, so now for attestation. Um, our goal is to prove that a given guest runs the expected workload in secure mode, in secure execution mode. Um, with IBM Secure ex Execution, we more or less get that for free. Um, we do not require external attestation because our components are encrypted and integrity protected. If we inject a secret, a unique secret, uh, during the build of that image, for example, a SSH pub key that's unique to this image, we can attest that image by simply logging in because no one else has a pub public key. So, I just said um, we can do attestation implicitly, so why do it explicitly or externally? There are some reasons. Um, the first one is uh, we want probably to prove a third party that we're running under secure execution without passing any image secrets or giving it access to the our image. Or we want to verify not only that our guest is not only a specific image, but also a specific instance of that image, because we have it multiple times. Or in general, we need trusted information about our guest image instance or the execution environment we're running in. Uh, so the use cases are First of all, we want to get compliant to a test with a third party. Or the other one is to customize an already prepared generic as secure execution image we got from another person we more or less trust. Um, we first would have to attest the image externally that it's running under secure execution and more or less the expected workload. And then deploy our own instance de uh, dependent secrets. And then next time we can attest it implicitly while logging in. 
so how does explicit attestation work for secure execution? Um, we start the secure execution image at some point via the KVM host. Uh, it sends a call to the ultravisor and this ultravisor first verifies the hashes of the secure execution image and then starts the image. And at this point, the uh, guest will transition into secure execution mode. Um, then we have the attester that's running on a trusted system that's uh, cut off there at the top. Uh, it will generate a request. And this request, similar to the secure execution image, contains a public ECDH key, but this time from the tester, and an encrypted measurement key. We send this request to the secure execution guest, and this guest will do an ultravisor call to the ultravisor, and the ultravisor will do a measurement with the measurement key. And this measurement contains the hashes from the secure execution image, and the configuration unique ID of the secure execution guest image. And then we send back the response. And at the ver uh, trusted system, we again verify the measurement. So we check if the, uh, the measurements are the same. Um, we have a new tool to do that. It's called PVA test. And it consists of three commands, create to create the request on the trusted system, perform to do the ultravisor call on our guest, and verify to again verify the measurement on our trusted system. Uh, the current state is that you need an IBM Z16, and the guest uh, has a kernel 5.19. Uh, for cumulative and generating of the secure execution image, it just works, no changes required. And the PV attest is included in S390 tool starting version 2.22. And now we're going to confidential dumping. Okay. Does, okay. So now let's talk about confidential dump. This is a newly introduced mechanism to securely and reliably dump a secure execution guest by the untrusted hypervisor. So let's first compare a uh, guest initiated and the hypervisor initiated dump to see why it's so important to support hypervisor initiated dumping for secure, secure execution guests at all. So um, that's from a guest perspective. So uh, the big pro for a guest initiated dump is that it needs no hypervisor interaction at all. So if you are using KDump, for example, you do not need the hypervisor to interact. Or you do not have to trust them. Then, and the guest knows its database. For example, KDump allows you to use page filtering and so on. But a uh, big con is uh, it's not always possible. For example, if you have a, bu a mem bug memory management, then the uh, kernel will, will not boot. And for example, for early boot problems. And so um, we had already a lot of uh, feedback that many customers or many people um, have tried to start and they forgot to use uh, bounce buffers, so the guest just crashed. And in that case, it would be really useful if we would have um, a dump of that. Then uh, dumping modifies the guest state. That's a problem as well. Sometimes it's even destructive. Then uh, it needs extra memory for the, day, uh, for the dumper in case of KDump, and it must be set up. So pros uh, for the hypervised initiated dump, it's reliable, as I've already mentioned. It doesn't modify the guest state, and guest initiated dumping is not always uh, available. For example, if you think about small guests, you cannot have the overhead of the memory uh, required for KDump. But the contra, um, the hypervisor interaction is required, and we have to transport the dump, and the hypervisor needs the ac also needs access to the whole guest state, and in case of secure execution the hypervisor get, uh, does not have access to the whole guest state. So how can you do hypervisor initiate the AMP in case of secure execution guest? Obviously, there was new hardware firmware support required. Uh, we have introduced something that, that, uh, that requires an opt-in. So you have to set in the SE, during the SE image preparation, uh, you have to allow confidential dump and you have to CCK, the custom communication key that as uh, Stefan already mentioned, to do so. This key is used for the uh, dump encryption and protection. 
So there were now four new uh, ultraviolet cores introduced. So first, initiate configuration dump. Then second one, dump CPU state. Third one is dump configuration storage state. Storage means an S390 uh, memory. So just in case you just don't know. And then the last uh, ultraviolet call, new ultraviolet call is complete configuration dump. So uh, from a dumping perspective from QM UKVM. So first we have to stop all these CPUs. We do have to do sync, to sync up and so on. And then uh, we will read all the guest pages. So read all guest pages is, is simplified here because of space and for simplicity. What is actually happening here is QMU reads the guest memory. In case the page is secure, we will get a storage program exception that leads to an uh, export of this page. You authorize the encrypted page and then we can just read this encrypted page. And this page can be written uh, to the dump. If it's a shared page, we can just read the page. Then the third uh, step is initiate the configuration dump. We have to say, hey, Altruiser, uh, we want to dump. Then uh, we will call for each uh, vCPU, uh, the Altruiser call uh, dump CPU state. Um, we will get back the encrypted CPU states. Then for every one megabyte of uh, storage, we have to call dump configuration storage state. We will get the three components uh, of each page because these pages are uh, independently uh, encrypted by using AES XTS. And for each page, we are using a different tree. Then you have to call a complete configuration dump and you will get, get encrypted uh, AES GCM in this case. Uh, the key derivation C, the I read, weak, nonce, and the storage encryption uh, key, so the XTS keys. And in the end, you have to write this dump data to a VM core file. Obviously, we have to, uh, this new dump file is different to the uh, normal S390 dump file. So uh, here you can see how this new ALF file looks like. So it's pretty much the same as before, but now we have some uh, additional information. So we still have the node types for the information that the hypervisor knows. So in this case, for, uh, for the vcp one we have the uh, node type NTP or status. And in all that information, uh, hypervisor does not have any confidential state, also does not know anything confidential of the, about the vCPU. So uh, that's just a case if you want to debug the hypervisor. And it looks like a normal VM call uh, dump. But now we have introduced a new node type. Uh, you can see it here for vCPU1, NTS390, PVCPU data. Uh, that's just an encrypted blob and we will interpret it, decrypt it, and there's all the confidential CPU data stored. Then there's one PT load segment as before, but in that case, it's just AES XTS encrypted. And to store all the metadata, we have introduced new sections. So we have one PV compil, that's just the content of the ultrawise call, complete configuration dump, and we have PV mem meter. There is the uh, all the tweaks are stored. And because it's an alpha, we have to introduce a section header a string table as well. So if you just, is someone interested, uh, what's the value of this new node type? Here it is. Okay, now we will come to the lifecycle. So first we have to generate the secure execution image. We have to uh, enable the dump feature and we have to set the CCK. Then we will copy the uh, secure execution image to the uh, host. We will start the image, we will do the verification. The ultraviolet will uh, remember the CCK for uh, the later dumping. Then the SE guest workload is running. If at some moment uh, we want to dump, so QMU will all, uh, do all the ultraviolet calls and KVM as I've already mentioned. It will written to a file the core dump the uh, core dump will be transferred to the uh, guest owner, for example, and the guest owner can use now a new tool with the name set get dump to decrypt this dump, and you will get normal SV9 TVM core dump that you can use and analyze as you're used to by using, for example, crash. So the command lines that are used here are the uh, tool to generate the secure execution image is generated image, and there are the new command line options, enable dump and uh, com key for specifying this uh, com uh, custom communication key. Uh, as you can see here, the command for creating the dump has, is unchanged, so you can just use libvirt as usual, version dump uh, dash dash memory only. 
So there was no change in the QMU monitor protocol API so far. I must say uh, the QMU patches are still under review, so that might be changed. Okay. Then uh, the commands for CGetDump, because as I have already mentioned, um, each page is independently e, sorry <laughs> for that. Uh, encrypted, so you can use Fuse, for example, to just uh, create a virtual file system. So we, you will have on the fly decryption. And if you're interested, for example, in uh, debugging um, kernel crash, you do not want to decrypt the whole 200 gigabyte of memory, for example, but just all the two gigabytes. In that case, you can just use this option. You can mount this uh, dump, and then it will create by using Fuse a virtual file system. And you can use uh, you can just use uh, crash as you are used as you are used to, or you can dec decrypt the whole file. So uh, C get dump minus dash dash key. Then you have to specify the custom communication key, the uh, decrypt encrypted file, and then that's it. And mount and the output file. It depends what you want. Okay, so the count state is um, we need hardware support of course. So IBM said <coughs> sixteen. Um, the KVM changes, they have already uh, been upstreamed. So it's included in uh, the kernel version 6.0, release candidate 1. And QMU, as I have already, already mentioned, it's still under review. So libvirt, right now there are no changes uh, required, so it just works. Uh, Genpoint image changes has uh, upstreamed with UZ, uh, since uh, version 2.21. And for set get dump, uh, it's still working for Oculus. So let's summarize. At the station, um, you can use it to verify the SQ execution image instance. Um, it's useful to implicit at the, as we on S390 we have implicit at the station, and now we have also explicit at the station. Um, after, tra after transition into secure execution mode, and it can be used to identify a specific image instance, and you can attest without revealing any secrets. Uh, then let's summarize the confidential dump uh, things. Uh, first, you have to do an opt-in, so that's important to know here. Then it's reliable and a secure way for hypervisor-initiated dumping, because the actual guest state is encrypted. Um, no QMU monitor protocol API changes right now, so there are no changes in libvirt. And cgetdump will handle the decryption. On the fly decryption is possible, and the decrypted dump can be analyzed, for example, using crash. So thank you for your attention, and any questions so far? Any questions? Yes. Is there a parallel between the confidential dump and light migration? Can you use like the same APIs to do that? It would be great, but <laughs> hmm? oh, okay, okay. The question was: uh, Is it possible to reuse um, the API for the live migration? And some parts of it, sure, but for the long run, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. So, yes. Maybe you can answer, and it's not about the CCK, but about a host key document. So, so the question was, uh, we rely on the CCK for the security of the uh, of the secure uh, execution image, right? Yeah. Uh, we have multiple keys, so, uh, but the secure execution image relies on the public ECDH key for the guest owner, and the public private key bundle of the ultravisor. We only know the public key of the ultravisor, of course. So, How do you roll that but I think that's a question for Claudio. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, are you asking what? Uh, how do you get? Uh, how do you get the private key in the hardware? Yeah. Is that a question? It's already in. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, so the question was, how do we differentiate between different guest owners, right? Each guest owner has his own public ECDH key and private key also. But no, yeah. And you, you use your own public ECDH key to encrypt the image. Yeah. And if you have a different guest owner, you use your own key. I'm not sure if that... Yeah? Okay, um, let, 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 let me help here. Uh, each machine has a private key baked in, and you as a customer just take uh, the public key of that private key and you use it to make your image. And then you give that to the hardware, and the hardware will just unwrap it. And the hardware is the only one that knows that private key, so it's secure. All those keys are needed, these other keys that I mentioned, the customer communication key and what, what not, those are keys that are baked into this encrypted blob, first of all, and those are needed for these other dumping and uh, attestation things, but uh, those are provided to, uh, uh, to the hardware uh, through this encrypted blob, and the blob is encrypted with the public key uh, and the pri uh, of the machine, the machine has a private key baked in. At, at the root of the trust is the hardware, and how yes. How do you attest that? You, you need to make sure that the root of trust is the right one before you actually can make the or make assumptions about the trust. The uh, private, pri uh, uh, yes. Sure so how can you make sure that you're not faking the root of trust? Of course, uh, the public key is signed by IBM. So there is a uh, there is a root of uh, certificates. So uh, the, the and private keys that so the um, private key and the public key that, uh, for, for the specific machines are signed by IBM. So if you look at a public key for an S390 machine, you can just check if it's been signed by the actual IBM, um, so we with the, the classic root of trust, you know. There's a private key per uh, machine. It's not an IBM wide. It's not an IBM wide, no. It's an IBM, it's a, it's a per machine. And IBM does not know it anymore once it's baked in. I, I don't know. Uh, the question is if it's equivalent to a TPM. I'm not an expert on, on those things, so I uh, don't know. Me neither, sorry. <laughs> no. I no, assume sorry. that key is, I mean, properly secured inside. I mean, uh, physical attacks are not able to reach that private key that you have in each of your, each your, uh, your systems, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. I think one more question, right? Yeah. Or two. Yeah. You had two questions? Oh, uh, well, I wanted to know, so the customer, the CC key, so that is something that the customer creates himself, right? So at the moment when I secure the gas that creates a secure uh, boot image is when I pass the power, right? Yeah. I do not depend on IBM to define it. That's true, and now I repeat it. Uh, the customer communication key is created during the image uh, creation yeah. and yeah. encrypted using the our public key what, and yeah. so on. And Uh, AES GCM. You any more questions? Okay, thank you. We are yeah. here, thank so you. if any more questions arise. <laughs>